Good morning, stampers and crafters. Welcome to Tina's Crafty Ink Spot. I have a new technique today. All right, it's new to me. I think it's been out there because I've been kind of looking it up. But the problem I found when I was looking up this technique is there are several ways that people do them with totally different outcomes. Well, the technique that I'm going to share with you is called cloisonne. Um, it's, uh, it, it's basically a French word that means portion. And this technique was established in uh, Asia uh, eons ago. Let's, let's just go with eons in Eastern Asia. It was all later taken on Japanese art and so on and so forth. What the art is, is they take these real fine pieces of copper and metal, uh, mostly copper, silver, some gold. Um, what I found was mostly copper because of how easy it bends. And what they do is they put this art on uh, jars and boxes and metal and what they do is they draw a design and then they take these really fine thin pieces of metal and they glue them onto their design and the way they glue them it creates compartments okay so thus uh cause name meaning portion it so it, it creates these compartments. And once they get all the metal in the design they want, it could be flowers, it could be fish, it could be, it could be anything. It could be just a, a abstract design. So uh, this is a really popular uh, technique uh, for jewelry makers. Um, once they get this metal, placed where they want it they have a special resin and they take these resin and these tiny little brushes or sticks and they fill the little compartments with the different colored resin i'll try to find a picture of one and and put it up but an, an actual um cloisonne uh portrait but if you look it up it, that that's basically what it is they're using met, fine metal to draw and create designs and then they fill in the little pieces or areas of the metal up to level with their little thin metal piece with these resins um, they can be any colors they can blend them it's a beautiful beautiful time sticking technique so I want to try to do it based on a card. So the first way I saw that card makers are doing it is they're taking an image, they're stamping it in copper or gold, and they're stamping it on magazine pages. So you, you know, pick a pick something on your magazine, and the only reason I can see that they're doing that not only for the different colors they can get but magazine pages are smooth and somewhat shiny so if you go to like this cover now the one I did I used the cover because the cover is super shiny so it would look like resin so if I took my copper piece and I laid it on there it would automatically look like the closetine because it's got the shiny look of resin behind it. So we'll be doing some of these, but I'm going to start off. I, I have several cards I will share with you at the end. I will also, on my blog, I'll put all the supplies I use. But we're going to jump right to the very first one, which this first one we are going to be using oh my gosh it comes out tomorrow in the online exclusives um this is the um 
irresistible blooms. This is a perfect image for this because you have a lot of space in there beyond what you emboss to show your background. So what I want, what I want to do is I'm going to show you with using the magazine, but I'm also going to show you a way that you can use your, whatever designer paper you want. How perfect is that? So let's make this first one. And then I'm going to show you some other tips and tricks. So what I want to do is I know I want two of these flowers. They're super easy to cut out. And they also do have a die. Okay, so if you wanted to um, die cut them out, you can. Okay, or fussy cut them. So here's the die for that. I've been doing so many of these. My room literally is chaos right now. I've been trying all these different ways to do this technique today. So the first thing I want to do is stamp these two flowers. And I think I want to pick something kind of colorful. So let's go through our magazine. See what we got that's colorful. Mm, look at that. Let's see. Let's grab our stamped images. See how they fit in there. Got that one that's real pretty. It's kind of looking more. So you just kind of, you know, thumb through your magazine. We could even do something off this cover. Yeah. Why not? Why don't we? Just put it somewhere and die cut it. You're going to have some different images in there. So, you know, different colors and designs mm -hmm. kind of like it all right let's do it let me find my stamping block oh i need my you need your embossing buddy for this let me see where mine disappeared to the main reason you need your embossing buddy for this this is smooth paper M magazine paper is smooth it's going to catch everything so where do we want to do our flowers maybe we'll i don't know i kind of like them there they get a little brown a little yellow in them well let's go ahead and take this page off so you can see where you could really go crazy if you have a really good catalog i was going i was making some earlier out of my uh, my dog magazine because look at all the colors in there we could still do that oh look at that that mm, i'm thinking an, one of my ocean cards will happen there oh look at this for our flowers all right we're gonna do this for our flowers look at the yellow on this dog oh perfect perfection all right i'm gonna peel this out kind of fun you know you all I could think of was you know I was trying to think of where my magazines were and I'm like well, I'll just go to a doctor's office and borrow a few magazines so I'm gonna get a little bit of the green in here and then maybe a little more of the dark there yeah that's what I think I want to do so let's embossing buddy this Stamp my big one first. Get our Versa mark. Now, like I said, you can do this in gold, copper, silver, doesn't matter. The art itself is done a lot in copper. Um, I would think because copper is really sturdy, plus it um, is a little more pliable. I mean, what they're using on the videos I saw is pretty pretty thin stuff that they're they're using so i can still see my my stamp there and let's put this one a little more in the yellow looks like we got it now 
I want to copper emboss this. I love copper. Let's grab a little sheet here. Move this out of the way so I don't get it all ruined. Not a cute puppy. See? Look at that. Look at the fun colors that are going to be in those flowers. Okay. Put that back. Now let's heat set that. Pardon the noise. Being a magazine, it's th a little thinner, so it heats up pretty easy. There it goes. Okay, what I did learn is now these flowers, it's, it's magazine. They're going, oh, I missed a whole spot right there. Let me heat it back. The glare caught it, caught it wrong. I guess I didn't get it. So what I did notice is these are going to be just a little bit flimsy. What you can do is glue them onto a, a, a piece of scrap card stock, and then you got something a little more hefty to work with. Um, as a matter of fact, I may have done that with these other ones. So what I can do. Especially if you plan on um, uh, popping them up on your card. Save that. That's some good color there. Alright, I'm going to find a piece of scrap paper here. That's one I need. Let me find a piece of scrap. piece of scrap so what I'm gonna do is just I'm gonna glue that down on there so it's gonna give them a little more strength before I die cut I'm just gonna set them there now we're gonna grab our die cuts see how cool those came out Okay, we're going to grab our die cuts. I'm going to run over to my die cut machine and cut these out. So now I've 
die cut them. I apologize. You know, my work area over here is just not quite big enough to have my die cut machine in the picture and everything. If I was uh, really organized, I'd play some music or something. Here's our two die cut flowers. They're even a little bit stronger because now we've put them on paper. Now, let's make our card base. What I did is I did a um, deckled edge piece, the largest one, and I took a piece of the um, Hello Irresistible DSP. I wanted the colors to kind of go with that. Well, the thing about this DSP is it's not, it's not real shiny. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to use my clear embossing powder and I'm going to make it shiny so that it's going to look like the resin. So you could do this technique, magazine, no magazine, any color of your DSP. The idea is that whatever's behind the copper, you need it to kind of look shiny. Okay, so find my tweezers, and we are going to just stick some clear embossing on here. Close my lid so I don't have clear embossing everywhere. Let's heat set this. Note to self, if you use really thick clear embossing powder, you could probably just lay this die cut that I got out of the set and cut out a copper right into that thick. But what I did is I die cut this with copper and I did use, I got smart, I finally my uh, adhesive sheets arrived is I have adhesive sheet on this. And then I'm gonna lay it over this. Look at that. And see how the clear really kind of gives it that resiny look, see how the reflection works. There you go. And then all I did, <coughs> pardon me, is I attached my piece to my deckled edge here, and then we'll trim it off. I'm going to glue that straight down so that I can pop my flowers. So I'm just going to glue that straight down. Now this is the easiest way I found to do this a technique and achieve the look <coughs> of the cloisonne that you want. Okay, isn't that pretty? How neat is that? All right, let me trim this off. Got to do just a little bit of creative trimming because of the deckled edge. Um, die cut. That's all right. That works. And look at that. How pretty is that? Okay. 
Now, I did, I die cut, and I guess I didn't get all the die parts out of that. I die cut a butterfly from the Brilliant, or Butterfly Brilliance. I have Butterfly Brilliance, I have two sets of it, okay? I have one set, now it normally comes in one big stamp set, one big die. Well, what I did is I bought a second set and I broke it up so that I can have individual um, butterflies. And I also cut up the butterflies so that I could have individual butterflies. Sometimes you don't need a whole sheet of butterflies. So that's what I did. That's how I ended up with blank or, you know, broke apart. So now I did a butterfly. What color should we put behind him? Let's go back to our magazine. Let's see. We could do green, but we got some greens there. We got some yellows there. Let's see if we got anything other colorful. Let's see what's in our magazine. Oh, looky here. You can always do a pink butterfly. With a little bit of character in it. Look at that. The pink. Let's see what else we got. And we got some rainbow right here. This is kind of the fun part. Going through a magazine and trying to figure out what picture you want to Ooh, we could do a blue butterfly. That would be neat. Blue and green. That'd kind of be colorful. Let's see, we got some coppers and yellows and greens. Do we want to go maybe some oranges? Maybe pop off there, orange with some green. A little bit extra there. Let's let's try that. Or we've got this cover. Look at this cover. We can do a bright yellow butterfly. Let's do that. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to get the die cut for that butterfly. My little girl's upset because I locked her out of my craft room. So she's kind of, she's, <laughs> she's actually out front barking under the the office window like I'm out here and out here will you come get me okay so there's the die that goes with this so all I need to do is just cut out a piece of the cover now we, did we want a yellow or do we want to do a little more orange orange and yellow let's do that be pretty look at that my die back there's my die okay so now I've already die cut my butterfly uh, out of the copper and it should have yeah it has the adhesive backing on it that's gonna save you um, if you have adhesive sheets use them I mean glue works but you know Saves a lot of time. So we're just going to melt him right on there. 
and see how the shiny just really gives it that enamel look so my takeaway would be find yourself shiny images in a catalog or make your DSP shiny if you're going to use this technique okay now I should have done a couple leaves but let's uh, find our dimensionals here and what I'll do I'm gonna put these on here for now I'm running out of dimensionals I just bought a whole set of dimensionals I hope they arrived in yesterday's package I did a, a an order the other day because I know it's not a big deal to a lot of people but I just hit 50,000 in personal sales that's a big milestone so I was pretty excited so we got those we can take our green and create some leaves and buy cup them put them on there but what I want to do is I want to move on and show you the other technique so what we did here do the exact same with the leaves that come in here stamp them in copper and on like the green or something in your magazine or even off your dsp and attach them onto your flowers so then we can just move our butterfly we'll just put him maybe right about there. What do you think? And then you put them on a card base. Little greeting. Voila! Look at the shiny on that. Okay. So now, and then this is what the the other one turned out like with the leaves on it. So it, it's fun, and they're going to be different depending on what paper you use. Okay. Now the other way. I really wanted to show you was kind of like doing it the Clossome way okay so I'm going to take a piece of paper and I'm going to grab my Versa mark or my, yeah my Versa mark and my Stamparatus this way it's it's kind of like a, a, another I want to say it's like doing another technique that we may have already done sort of thing but it's different so let me find the stamp set I want to use for this so I'm going to use the frame florets and I want these flowers right here it's nice long flowers Okay, we're gonna emboss and buddy. Get our sheet of paper for our first mark it up really good. I'm going to do that one more time because that's what I do. So we'll reverse mark that. Now we are going to add our copper emboss. You could use gold or silver if you'd like. I'm going with copper today. So as you can see, you could change it up quite a bit just by what you're doing. Now see if you had an image like this, it would be a little hard to, you know, cut it out of a magazine, right? 
I mean, you could. You could stamp it and cut it out, fuss cut it. That's a lot of fuss cutting. Even though we got a little dye that might get along the edge. Let me heat set this. fix that I hit it with the cord of my dryer and knocked a bunch of the embossing off welcome to my world there we go my cord hit it and knocked a bunch of the embossing off Okay, with the embossing, there's your raised edges. So, I want something shiny, okay? So I have a couple options. I want it to be shiny, and I want it to be, I don't know, shiny and, and dimension. So, you have two choices. I'm going to bring in my metallic watercolors okay i'm gonna zoom this in because it's super super easy to color if you don't have metallic watercolors you can always watercolor with your pearl x powders to give it that kind of pearl look so i'm just going to i have an inexpensive set of arteza um watercolors here a little i have a little paintbrush and i better put this embossing powder away before i lose it all so let me zoom you in a little bit so you can see just really how uh, simple this is to color real quick and then we're going to add one more little touch to it. Wrong way, sorry. Okay, so I'm only going to use a couple colors at this. Let's grab some pink over here. Just a little brush. Get some water in there, pick it up, and let's paint a couple of these flowers. Now the fun thing about painting when it's already embossed is your paint stays in the line really easy. Just dab within the, the flower itself and the paint will stay in the line. The embossing helps keep it there. You can make it as dark or as light as you like. So I'm going to paint a couple of these pink. And you don't really need watercolor paper. We're not we're not saturating this paper. You're just putting a little bit of color down. And you'll see that the, the what water you do have on your brush will flow into the flowered area and fill it in. Okay. <coughs> Pardon me. I got a couple more small flowers. Maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll do them. Uh, yeah, let's do them some blue. Maybe a little blue. Those flowers. And the metallic in the paint gives it, you know, some of its shine that it needs, that we need to create the technique. 
There we go. I've got a couple blue flowers in there. Uh, maybe there's a little one right there. Okay. Now, I'm going to grab a green or two. Let's do this one. And there is no rhyme or reason to this. None, 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 none. You paint color whatever you want and just try to stay right inside those that embossing powder and you'll see when you touch your brush into that area it'll automatically pull up inside the embossed area okay see it pulling on i don't know if that's going to show very good for you but it just kind of pulls up in there and as it dries it's metallic you can if you think you got it too wet just pick up a little water with your brush i'm going to grab a little bit lighter green here you can use your aqua painter if you don't have a paint brush that's where you use a toothpick for all, for all that you know I'm just using a little bit lighter green on a few of these just to add some contrast. You see, I am not concentrating. I am just dabbing them in where it needs to be. Okay. I'm going to pick up a little bit of my pink. And I'm going to dab right in the center just to add some more dark depth. To those first ones that I painted just it's a quirky thing you don't even need to do it when it dries it will just dry with a little bit of two-tone look to it okay and we are done so now what we need to do is we need to let it dry let's see if the heat tool lightly with your heat tool you don't want to melt your embossing powder so stay up far distance away and maybe even dry from the back side a little because I want to show you the other part of this technique that really makes this stand out as a true cloisonine cloisonne technique and it should be about dry we use so little water, you know what I mean? We look pretty dry. Guess what I'm going to do next? I am going to bring in my fine tip glue pen. We are going to put enamel in our image. So hopefully my fine tip glue pen is behaving. It gets clogged pretty easy. I have a I was just using it this morning too if you have crystal effects the old school crystal effects or 3d lacquer you can use that too the reason I like the fine tip glue is it dries very fast and flat it, it's not real dimensional Okay, it looks like I'm going to have to fight my glue pen here a little bit. I'm going to wipe out the tip. I've been using it all morning, so I'm really surprised it's clogged up. So I'm just going to take a pin and push any stuff that's stuck in the tip through. Why are you being stubborn today? No one's bending my brush before, or my safety pin. Alright. Let's push it all the way down. There we go. That should have got it. Let's try it. 
you know, I have that little fine tip glue tin cover, and this thing, it's yet to work for me to keep it unclogged. So let's see. There we go. We're going. So now, I'm going to resume in just some more so you can see what I'm doing. And I guess I should move you into the picture. Okay. So all I'm going to do is go right the same way we painted. Just put a little bit of glue inside those petals. Okay. It, the heat embossing is still thick enough that even the glue will pool there. Okay? It doesn't take long to do. Just kind of move it around with the tip of your glue pen. And it'll fall in line in those. Let me get this little blue flower. Maybe a couple of the bigger leaves. This to me would be true closinin. Close closinin? Closinin? Because you're actually adding enamel to a metal filament. Does that make sense? So you're actually creating it. But you're creating it on a card maker's um, level you know scale so we filled them all in and looky there let me see if I get it to show up there is your closeting flowers how fun are those right this you do need to let let dry but think of how you know the endless possibilities you have with this technique it's fun you you can use magazines you can do stamped images um i use die cuts die cut there uh where's some of my other crazy ones i created today um this one i did exactly what we did um just now but I copper embossed on black. You know, that's, that's, and then I did the liquid glue in the flowers. Isn't that beautiful? And did a little bit of embossing folder there. Nice copper frame. This one, remember our dies, which ones are they? They are fancy frames. These are fancy frames. Die cut a fancy frame. I laid it over the top of the dry, oops, the dry brush DSP that has its own shine and has its own copper. Laid it on a copper frame. I black embossed the greeting. How simple is that? Still gives you the same effect. I mean, if you wanted to be super duper 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 detailed, you could do the clear emboss around there. But if you look at how shiny that DSP is behind there, you don't need to. So, that's it. That, um, I did use the, the uh, frame, the same one I just told you, the fancy frames. I did this frame over some magazine piece, but I did add the glue or crystal effects on the frame parts so that it really gives it that enamel look. And then on the flower, I did exactly what we did here, but I did it on black and then colored the background. So it's the exact same thing. So. You could even stay simple. This one, I copper embossed my turtle onto some a magazine or some DSP. I put my crystal effects on it, cut it out when it was dry, 
and technically that's the same technique put it on the ocean folder and the only reason that's shiny is I used a, a little bit of my pearl pearl X powders on that that seashell embossing folder to give it a pearl look but as you can see you can go crazy have fun this one I added a copper frame around the turtle um, he was also stamped in copper on uh, a magazine page well there you go I, I hope you give it a chance G go online there's a couple that I found each um, technique I saw was different the main one people do is stamping on uh, magazines cutting them out and putting them in a card this I thought gave you a little bit more to work with well I hope you enjoyed it and you have a very very happy stamping day I will include all the supplies used here and a slight write up so you understand and all the samples. Have a very happy Stampin' Day. Bye-bye now.